Hi and welcome to News Now. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. Today we are up on the roof of our new school with two key members of the Belmont Middle and High School Building Committee, Diane Miller and Bill Labalo, Chairman. Welcome. Thank well, you. Thank you. We are here to talk about solar panels and all the features of our new school. And thank you again for being here. And uh, how many solar panels are we going to have? Well, as you can see, we have a uh, vast expanse of roof around us, and we have really prioritized uh, trying to maximize the production of solar panels on this roof. So we are anticipating more than 2,300 panels up here eventually, and they will be capable of producing 1.3 megawatt hours per year of energy. Wow. And when do you think it's going to be installed? Well, we are uh, planning to uh, go out to bid this month. The building committee in our past June meeting approved the package to go out to bid. So we are in the process of bidding this and then that process will take us probably till August uh, when we have a recommended bidder from our team and we'll meet again to award and then we're off to the races. We're looking to have this roof completely covered like Diane said next year and uh, making energy, renewable energy. Uh, about uh, the end of the summer next year, 2023. Open in time for the middle school. Right, so this is going to cover this uh, roof, which is the entire high school roof, but also over there is the middle school roof and it'll cover all of that as well. Oh, wow. So one, this is one contiguous building and it'll, there'll be PV panels, uh, solar panels on the entire roof complex. How much money are we going to save installing this? That's a very good question, and actually I think it's a very exciting um, thing for us to talk about. This is going to be the largest solar array in town, um, and it is anticipated that we will be saving a, about $170,000 per year in operating costs, um, approximately. And so according to our calculations, and of course that depends on user habits as well, but according to our calculations, that translates to a payoff for the system in about 15 years. That's so cool. And we have an option to store energy? Oh, not in this system. This system is, is directly tied to the network, so we don't have batteries in this system. I suppose uh, in the future when the battery technology gets, uh, gets a little more advanced, that's something that could be considered, but at this time our evaluation suggested that would not be appropriate. And the positive impact of installing these and how can we measure all the, the achievements that we're going to receive from the panels? Well, first of all, um, the, uh, the positive impact, uh, the community response has been incredible. So we've had uh, people just eager to get the system up and running. Um, so we're so happy to move this forward to the bidding stage. Uh, I, it's, there's just been community support the entire way. Uh, town meeting had the support uh, of, of continuing to ensure that we were uh, moving forward with it. Uh, we're, we have down in our main lobby, uh, monitors, so sort of TV monitors, where uh, eventually you're going to see the energy that the building is uh, using, and then you're going to be able to see the energy that this array is actually harvesting. And I can only imagine how the students are going to want to see those uh, sort of try to balance themselves out or working towards goals to, to really be efficient. And ultimately, um, this this solution of, of solar array plus the efficiency of the building is going to allow the building to be classified as a ZNE building. Right. And any, any other sustainable features that we have in the building? There are actually quite a few other features. This is one of the big ones and probably one of the most visible ones. Um, but this building is designed not only to be um, capable of being a zero net energy building, it is that's what ZNE stands for. It's also going to be a LEED certified building, which is Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. Um, so we have a lot of other features baked into the design of the building, things such as an um, efficient mechanical system. We've got 283 geothermal wells. Um, we've got no fossil fuels on site. Um, if you look at the building from the outside, you'll notice the little roofs that we have over all the windows. Those are um, intended to block some of the sunlight, so those sun shading devices are also functional, not, not just a decorative feature. Um, we have a high performance building envelope, so there's a lot of things that are in the design of the building that help toward sustainable design, toward energy efficiency. That's so cool. And you mentioned that the community has been 
amazingly impacting and supporting this. They have, um, and it's we're here talking about this uh, because when the community, when the committee was formed in 2016, uh, one of the first things the community reached out to us about was Z and E, yeah. solar on the roof, right? And yeah. and they did that because uh, the climate action plan that Belmont voted on uh, quite a few years earlier, and this is just perpetuating that uh, what Belmont wants to see. So it was very easy. Uh, Diane, remember we had value engineering, we had these issues with budget. Mm. So I, was, never, I yeah. was gonna say, I don't know that I would say it was very easy. I think that it's actually been um, very challenging. I think it's been a priority for the community. It's been a priority for our committee. An easy priority. But yeah. <laughs> an easy thing to prioritize, yeah. a challenging thing to hold on to on a project that is large, that has a large budget. Um, we're building, we're designing, and we're building during a time right now where construction costs are through the roof. We've got pandemic costs that are impacting the project. And so we've had, on a project of this scale, as would be expected, we've had various rounds of value engineering. And as a large ticket item, solar arrays, have, our solar arrays have always been something that we've looked at and scrutinized, and is it worth it? And I think it's very exciting that it has survived that we've worked really hard to make smart decisions to keep the project on budget and to keep the solar panels through all of that. Um, and I, I think it's actually a, a wonderful investment because as we mentioned, there is a cost saving. So there's a financial investment that this is providing for the project. Um, but it's also a great investment in the future and in our children, which is the heart of what we're doing here with this new school. Correct. Diane talks about budget. I just want to mention one thing. Um, yeah, we've been challenged with budget, um, but we, from the very beginning, we established a budget of $2.6 million for PV. Mm -hmm. It still exists today, untouched. Right. Untouched, dedicated to the installation of PV. We're out to bid, so we have that. I think sometimes community is a little confused, saying, where are you going to come up with the money if you, if you have a tight budget? Um, so we've set that aside from the start of the project. Um, we feel very comfortable, given the size, the market conditions that we see, and the prices that our experts are saying are coming in uh, on other projects that will we will fund the full coverage of, of, of the new roof uh, with PV, maximize, as Diane said, uh, PV installation on this new building. That's great. Thank you so much for your work. We are on time, on a budget, and we will continue to do some more uh, updates on this project. Thank you all for tuning in. That was it for today. Thank you both. You're welcome. Thank you. And Check out next month, we're going to have another update. And that was it for today. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. See you next time.